Hi all, you must have heard about this term called big data and in this video I am going to explain what exactly this big data means and what are some of the technologies using which big data is implemented. So till about a decade or two back, you know, gigabyte was a large size for a file. Then came terabyte and then now we have moved to petabyte, exabyte and now zettabyte. But what exactly is the big deal about it? You know, you can always buy a bigger hard disk to store all this information. As it turns out, that's not really the case. Up to the terabyte level, it's okay. You can buy a 2 TB hard disk or maybe two pieces of 2 TB hard disk and put it inside a computer. But when you go to petabyte, exabyte and zettabyte, then a single computer completely fails to store all that information. And this has become very, very important because of the internet boom we have a lot of real-time data collection which goes into a very very large size. Now you may say okay big deal uh, you can always use some clusters which have been in use since ever and uh, there is also concept of parallel programming which can be implemented using techniques like MPI. So then what's special about uh, big data you know you can always use those traditional techniques of uh, you know clustering and uh, parallel programming to address this problem. As it turns out, the main problem with that kind of an approach is that in your parallel programming, the entire program with the division of the task to various uh, nodes in your cluster has to be done by the programmer by hand. And that can be very, very taxing, especially because the variety of data that comes into the big data machines is very, very wide. You know, if you had only one kind of data coming in at a particular rate then still you could hire a software programmer to write a code that works for your system but there is so much variety in today's uh, internet space that a standardized approach does not really work and to handle this problem google came up with this algorithm called MapReduce, uh, which not only did this uh, segregation of your incoming data and processing into different chunks but it also incorporated algorithms to do optimization and load balancing so that the individual software programmer does not have to worry about these concepts and that transition from conventional uh, clusters and parallel programming to the use of these sophisticated algorithms like MapReduce is what is the leap that computer science has made over the past decade or so. So essentially big data requires a set of techniques and technologies with new forms of integration to reveal insights from data sets that are diverse, complex and of a massive scale. You know massive means we not only are limited to petabyte but are now even moving to exabyte and zettabyte. Now big data has a lot of characteristics which are important to take into consideration in order to design a good big data algorithm and uh, that list is very very long but we are going to discuss some of the most important characteristics of big data that you need to keep in mind. So these are the six V's, the six V's of big data. The first V is volume and it refers to the quantity of the generated and stored data. As I just mentioned, big data deals with, uh, you know, exabytes and zettabytes of data, which is an enormous amount of data volume. So your big data technology has to be able to handle this amount of volume. The second V is variety. As I just said that, uh, you know, in the standard uh, parallel processing algorithms or clusters in the early 2000s or before that, you had one kind of data coming into your uh, algorithm. But because of this internet boom, now your same piece of software has to handle structured, semi-structured as well as unstructured data in the form of text, images, audio as well as video. And these are captured through various sources like social network, internet browsing, log files, sensors and devices like this. Structured data is something that is present in the form of data tables. You know, for example, if you take an Excel sheet, that is an example of structured data, which is very well known to us. Semi-structured data and unstructured data are relatively not very familiar terms. But if you take email, you know, which is something that all of us are familiar with, that is an example of semi-structured data. Why is it semi-structured? 
because it contains structured components like name, email address, recipient, date of the email, time of the email and so on. And it can also be organized into various folders like the inbox and you know sent, trash etc. So that gives a structure to your email. However, the email also contains the text of the email, the main body of the email, which is unstructured data because you cannot organize that in a simple tabular form. So this is the kind of variety that your big data technology has to deal with. And this is the second V of the big data characteristic. The third V of big data is velocity. And this is the speed at which data is generated and processed. In current uh, times where even a millisecond is a long time, you need algorithms that can process this massive amount of data in a relatively very, very short amount of time. And this calls for massive amounts of optimization, which algorithms like MapReduce are excellent at. The fourth V of big data is veracity, which refers to the truthfulness or reliability of the data. You know, you may, you may get data in, you know, exabytes and zettabytes and you may be able to store it. But if the storage is not of good quality, then you are into trouble. So for example, when you get data from all these different streams and you send them to clusters, there has to be some redundancy built in so that even if one of the cluster goes down, you still can access that data from another cluster. So you need to make sure that the data which is stored is truthful as well as reliable so that even when you access that after a year or two years, you know that there is no corruption which has happened. And this is the fourth V of big data called veracity. The fifth V of big data is value, which means that what is the worth in information that can be achieved by processing and analyzing of large data sets. You know, you don't want to store this exabytes and zettabytes of data for nothing. You finally want to analyze them in order to get insights which can lead to development of your business. And that is why when implementing any particular big data technology, you also have to think of the value, which means what is its processing ability so that you can get the required information for your business needs. And the final V or the sixth V is variability, which means that is your big data technology something very, very rigid or is it flexible? to be able to handle the changing formats, structure and sources of big data. You know, the internet space is changing so fast that something which is in fashion today may go out of fashion six months from now. So your big data technology has to be variable enough to be able to handle these changes. You know, you don't want to completely have a new system installed every six months. You want to have a system that works over a longer period of time. And so your big data technology also needs to incorporate this notion of variability in order to take care of this changing format structure and sources of big data. So as I mentioned, one of the fundamental advances in this field was made by Google in the form of MapReduce algorithm, which has kind of become the bedrock of all the major big data technologies and Apache Hadoop, which is the most popular open source uh, framework today for big data is based on this MapReduce algorithm. And this MapReduce, of course, does parallel processing, which means it breaks your incoming data and processing requirements into various chunks. But as I mentioned, that can be done even by traditional parallel processing algorithms like MPI. So where MapReduce comes in and why is it so magical is that it does all the segregation, optimization and load balancing on its own without the user having to specify that explicitly. And that is why it becomes so easy to use these big data technologies because dividing a given piece of work into chunks is not really a big deal. It is the optimization and how you actually send this to different clusters in order to maximize the processing and storage speed is what really matters. And, and this is what the MapReduce algorithm takes care for you. So Apache Hadoop is an open source framework that allows you to store and process big data in a distributed environment across clusters of computers using very simple programming models. And currently Apache Hadoop is like, you know, almost a default choice for big data 
algorithms and one of the biggest apache hadoop servers is the yahoo cluster uh, which has you know thousands of cpus running in a distributed fashion and has over more than 4000 nodes and this is one of the biggest apache hadoop clusters in the planet as of now so the apache hadoop has mainly four components uh, the first is the hadoop distributed file system or called hdfs uh, so this is the uh, basic file system over which all other functions of Hadoop run. What it does is that it breaks down the data into small packets called blocks and these blocks are stored in a distributed manner and to ensure some redundancy and to ensure that data is never really lost, it stores multiple copies of each block so as to prevent data loss due to server breakdown. Now these blocks of the Hadoop cluster can be of different sizes but the typical size of each block currently is around 128 MB and the reason it works so well is that computation is done at the data node itself. So wherever the data is stored the Hadoop cluster or the Hadoop algorithm does the processing of the data there itself so that there is less amount of back and forth between the main node and the data node and this helps in maximizing the efficiency of your big data technology. The second component of Hadoop is the MapReduce algorithm which I have already uh, mentioned to you earlier. So this is for parallel processing of each data block at the cluster node and this was developed by scientists from Google. What it does is that it divides the task into small parts, assigns them to different computers and then collects the results to form a integrated output. And the best thing about this MapReduce and the reason why it is so popular is that it automatically manages other aspects of the parallel processing framework like process distribution, optimization and load balancing without the particular user or software programmer having worry about all these details. So the MapReduce as you know has two stages map and reduce. The map or the mapper's job is to process the input data. So the incoming file is in the form of a file or directory which is stored in the Hadoop distributed file system HDFS and then the input file is passed on to the mapper function line by line. The mapper processes the data and creates several small chunks of data called blocks and then you come to the reduce stage. So what this reduce does is that it processes the data which is coming from the mapper and then produces a final integrated output which is then again stored in the HDFS framework. The third component of the Hadoop framework is the Hadoop common. So Hadoop common is just a set of libraries which is used by the Hadoop framework. Then the fourth component is the Hadoop yarn. So this is a job scheduling and cluster management functionality of the Hadoop framework. So this Hadoop is excellent and it forms a bedrock for most of the big data technologies currently. However, it is not very good for iterative algorithms like the k-means clustering because the data has to be fetched from the hard disk multiple times and reading and writing from a hard disk multiple times is not very fast. And here comes another big data technology called Apache Spark which is built on top of the Hadoop MapReduce module and it extends the MapReduce model to efficiently use more type of computations which include iterative queries and stream processing. So because your Apache Spark does the processing in the memory or the RAM instead of the hard disk, it can run the application in Hadoop cluster many many times faster than what the standard Hadoop framework. So this Apache Spark uses Hadoop mainly for data storage functionality and it has its own cluster management and processing functions. It uses another uh, framework called the Resilient Distributed Dataset or RDD structure for processing the data which makes it much much faster. Apache Spark also has uh, several built-in APIs in Java, Python or Scala which can make writing programs very very easy in multiple manners. Apache Spark not only provides a map and reduce strategy but also supports SQL queries, streaming data, machine learning and various kinds of other graph algorithms. So Hadoop is better for batch processing of data and Spark is better for real-time processing. And for real-time processing, Spark can be about 
100 times faster than Hadoop. But of course, Spark can also do batch processing. But for that, Hadoop is also good enough. Now, one issue with Spark can be that it can be less secure than Hadoop and be more prone to vulnerabilities. And it can also be more expensive because Spark does its computation in the memory or the RAM. And RAM is any day more expensive than your hard disk. So because of these reasons, if you only want to do batch processing, then you stick to Apache Hadoop. But if you want to do real time processing and if you are really keen on the speed of processing, then you need to invest that kind of money and get onto Apache Spark. There is another uh, uh, framework called the Apache Kafka, which is the open source real time streaming platform and it can also persist the data for a specific time period. So Kafka is like a distributed messaging system and it can run as a service on one or more servers. So if you really want to manage a real time big data system, then you can bring in your data through Kafka and do the processing using Spark because Kafka does not support any programming language to transform that data. It is merely a streaming platform, whereas Spark can support multiple programming languages and libraries. So you take in the data using Kafka and then process that using Spark and store it using the Hadoop HDFS framework. So this would be an example of a big data pipeline that you can form for your business. So this was a brief introduction to various big data technologies. If you want to learn more about this, please click on the link in the description box below.